everybody and welcome back to Enigmatica 6 Expert. In today's episode, we automate the production of Wixie Charms. Finally, we'll be able to set up all of the advanced or upgraded crafters and anything that requires neural processors. So, I hope you enjoy. Okay, so today we are finally going to be setting up this Wixie Charm farm. So, since last episode uh, with the Blood Magic setup, I haven't really gotten that many runes made because I'm still trying to craft myself as many displacement runes as I can first. I only managed to make one so far because we're not producing enough blood to actually fill these runes. Actually, no, we are making enough blood. It's just that we can't fill the runes uh, or the blood altars fast enough to actually provide them with enough blood. So it's kind of a bit annoying because if we look at displacement here, the displacement runes requires imbued slates. Now, I don't have many imbued slates. I only have 60. So for me to craft as many of these things as I want, so maybe like displacement, I might be able to craft myself 10 right now. Uh, to craft one, available nine. To craft one, to craft one, available, available. I might be able to craft all that. Over here, uh, I have set up this witch uh, spawner here. Didn't actually take, wasn't that hard to get the witch uh, spawn egg since I just lightning strike some of the villagers that were up above. He also mentioned ages ago I should really get my hands on a tarantula hawk in here because I will need his wings later on. So I've done that and we have no source. Why haven't we got any source? What's going on here? Oh, we're out of... Wait a second, hang on. Did I forget to put the sapling back in the exporter for the pisogenic insulator? Oh no, please don't tell me I didn't. Oh, it's still making white flowers. Oh God, that's not what I wanted. I thought I told this thing to stop that ages ago. Oops. Um. Well, that might be the reason why we're not producing enough uh, source now. So that's great. Um. I need to get that back up producing it again. It's actually quite night time here. Let me just quickly sleep. Right, so how are we going to be doing this? I don't know how to do this. I haven't seen anyone else do this yet. So we're going to be doing some a bit of experimentation, but I kind of have an idea in my head on how I want to do it. It's going to involve like what I have right here, which is a witch spawn or whatever. I want to put a source jar above on this missing block here, sending from over there. Okay, probably relay it off that one of those jars or maybe even put another jar here or just even connect it from there and put the source relay there and send it over. Okay, then I want to put a, a spell turret down here. Let me just get rid of these witches quickly. I want to put a spell turret like right here, which will send in a dispel or the displacement spell or what's it called? A dis disenchant? I can't remember what it's called. This, uh, this thing here should be able to tell me. It was called dispel. Yeah, so dispel. So we need to send set up a spell turret on a timer that will send out a dispel effect in an AOE. Hopefully that is possible. I don't know. So we're going to attempt to make ourselves dispel now. How are we going to make it on this scribes table? So I think I remember you need parchment. So spell parchment. I need to make one of those from actual parchment, which is mage bloom fibers. So we can make craft that. So blank parchment into a spell parchment. I put this on the table. I need to get out my spell book here and we need to learn a few glyphs. Now, do I already have the AOE glyph in here? Oop, that's TP. Uh, what button was it? C? N? N. Okay, there we go. We want to create a new spell in here. I want it to be a projectile and I want it to... Okay, so we need to look at the spell. We need a glyph of the spell. We need to make that, which requires void reagent. And uh, that's not a problem. We can actually craft that. That's okay. How's this guy doing? Is he still crafting anything? No, he's not. So we can just craft this in here now. I wonder, should I set up a crafting recipe for the dispel or the, the void reagent? How much of this stuff are we actually going to need now in the future? Is it used for a lot? It's used for making end shelves, alchemy for void sigils. I don't know what that does. Uh... The pre prestigious palm. Don't know what that does. Doesn't have a use. Reach out and touch the sky. Just increases your reach distance by four. And you can put it in a charm slot. I mean, I can already have the enchantment on my 
reach on my armor, so I don't really need that. So with the Glyph Dispel, uh, Void Reagent, let me just get out the other ingredients here. So a Clay and Void Reagent. That's probably going to get picked up and now put into the system quickly here. So we already have nine Displacement Runes, which is not bad. Glyph of Dispel unlocked. Okay, the next thing we need is AoE. So AoE. I have a few of those left over, so we need to learn this one too. There we go. Oops. I need to make sure I stop clicking that. Um, oh god, I'm stuck. <laughs> right, let's actually press N now here. So we have Augment. We want to go Snoo Spell. So Projectile cannot be augmented by AoE. Okay, what can be done with this? Spells will affect a large area around a targeted block. How do I target a block now? See, this is things I need to figure out. Let's just test this thing. So dispel test. Let's create that. Go over here and add it to us. Is this? Wait, where did my book go? Oh, in my bag here. Shift right click. Here we go. Set spell. Let's make ourselves our basic spell turret. So that requires a block of source. Basic spell turret. Uh, need jar, source jar, jar of warding. Okay, now I just need a source relay. So relay. Good, I have a few source relays left over. So what I want to do is source jar. I'm going to fill in the ground right here. Uh, it should go through the ground. I don't see why it wouldn't. Uh, if that's the case, I might need actually a second source jar. So... Drop down here. So I want to put a source relay right here. Are we producing enough source just yet? No, but it shouldn't be really that much of an issue. Let's break this. And what I want to do is morphing tool. I want to say this guy here to take from here. Okay. Come back over here now with this source jar. Put it down a piece of dirt. And now I want to say this guy to send to here. This is a relay, right? Yes. So when there's enough source, it should send it out into that. Then underneath here, I should be able to put another jar. Let me just kill these witches off. These witches have no AI, which I kind of thought would help because I want them to spawn and land with half their health, as you can see. But it turns out even with no AI, they still automatically heal, which I don't want. But if I can get this thing to have an AOE, which is the reason why I'm setting this up. That way I'm hoping that they will be able to just send off a pulse every like a couple of seconds and actually like keep the whole area affected so that the witches won't cause any issues. So if I put this basic spell turret here, put the source jar here, grab another relay, okay? Target that on this. Can only use touch or projectiles. Hmm. So they can't use AOE. How can I get it to use AOE? Like down here, the spell does not start with a form glyph. How are you supposed to form it then? Okay, hang on. At Ars Nouveau, what kind of spells do we have? These are... How do we know if they're a form spell? Blue? What color are they in the book here? They're pink purplish. The ray, orbit, self, projectile, underfoot, touch, lay on hands. Okay, that doesn't really help me at all. What does Glyph of Ray do? Uh, I'm not bothering making that. Okay, the only thing I can really think of doing now is just send off a projectile. So just go in here, modify it with a projectile, and dispel. Oh, the just dispel can't touch, maybe? How are you supposed to use this one, then? I don't know. Projectile, dispel, create. Let's try that again on a, on a new witch. If I have to, I might even put this thing down to only spawn one witch at a time, because right now it's a spawn count of four, meaning it will spawn four witches. What the hell? There's a mob playing a music disc. Jeez, he's getting louder. Where is he? It's an Enderman. Jesus, okay. Well, there we go. So t firing the spell definitely worked. So it has to be a projectile and it has to hit them. 
which isn't exactly what I want, but I don't think I really have much of a choice. So let's put the spell back on here, shift right click and get it now and go back over here and add it to the spell turret. So that there, and it's going to kill these guys. And I want to actually move this guy around here. Okay, so what I want to do is actually have these pointing in the way and then these pointing like that. So they sit in the center, meaning they have complete, like, they're all out of the way. And if that's the case, I might need, even need to raise the spell turret up. So spell turret go here, jar go here, and then all I need is the relay. We go back up here, put the relay down. And this guy is set to that to there. So take from there. This guy send down to here. So that should be completely set up now. And unfortunately, this thing isn't going to work because of, well, we're not producing enough wood anymore. So I'm going to have to feed it. Right, there we go. It seems to be sending over a source now. Now, the thing is, this guy is not set to fire automatically. Now, there is this timer spell turret. I'm not entirely sure how it's supposed to work. But we're going to test it and see. So Tinker's Bronze, I need four of that. Then I'm also going to need a Clock and some Rose Quartz. There we go. Let's go back down here and pick up that spell turret. As you can see, it's going to produce me a lot of witches. So I'm thinking maybe I should set up an enti entity detector down there. Uh, set up on a redstone inverted sensor. So that way, this thing here will turn off if there is a mob down there. As you can see, one witch. That's all I want at a time. So I can have the spell turret on a timer to send out every... Well, I nearly need it for every second. Um, maybe I will need a, a mob detector. Because I was trying to see if I could avoid using the detector. But if I have to use it, I have to use it. And I can always set an inverted timer. So we'll try and use it. So basic spell turret will put you back down now in a second. So I need a mob detector. Ender Overseer. Craft one of these. And done. How does this guy work? What's the range of him? He does need power. Okay, so I might need to make myself a one range upgrade. And he does need power, but only one FE, which is not that bad. This thing actually seems to be doing it anyway. Now, how does this work, though? Does this send off a redstone signal? Like, if I look up, like, a uh, repeater, like, redstone repeater, does he send off a redstone signal off of him? He does. Okay, just off of it is where the redstone signal comes from. So, if I just set up a redstone link uh, to timer it, uh, it'll work. Yeah? I guess so. Let's go get ourselves now... Uh, do I need... To, wait, I, do I need to get anything? No, I don't. Oh, yeah, the range upgrade. Let's go make ourselves a range upgrade. So, range add-on. The add-on we're going to need is probably just an, a range one. So, just some gray dye. Okay, so range add-on one. Oh, we don't even need to craft it in the this looting chamber. Oh, perfect. Okay, that's good. Right. So, how are we doing this now? Let's come down here and put this in the wall right here. I need to actually face them the other way. Put you there, that in, and that should co cover this entire area. Then, what I want to do is back here. Okay, so repeater, come off of you now. And I don't want myself a redstone link. So redstone, I could run the cable around, but I think a redstone link is just easy enough. So that's going to give a redstone signal. And let's just do the wixie charm that we did pick up a second ago. So wixie shard. And then what I'll do is step over them here get rid of them all there we go and get myself my basic spell turret put it here get myself my spell link it to it redstone link put it on top put the wixie charm inside frequency one shift right click and now when something steps in here it sends out the pulse as you can see now let's test it let's see what happens if one witch falls down okay here he comes falls down get sent wixie charm obtained Perfect. That's exactly what I want. So we just need to set this guy in an inverted timer now to set up to say only send one while there's an entity down there. So if I grab another redstone link, okay, and I'm also going to need to activate this guy now with a redstone signal. So spawner, I just need to know what I need. So spawner, add redstone control is glyph of sensitive. 
let's go add this on or craft this guy now so put that in there with that i want to make sure the spawn um count is only one so i need to reduce the spawn count so that's glyph of summon decoy so that's magic mythical clay and armor stand oh i already have a bunch of them okay perfect i don't need to craft any so glyph uh, give me back up my sensitive glyph if it crafted it did it not craft it uh okay i don't know where that went oh no it is there but was it there the whole time when i was just blind maybe we look up token here we need ourselves a token of joy and a token of sorrow we want the token of joy in our offhand with the sensitive to give it redstone signal take that out token of sorrow and then summon decoy spawn count of four Three, two, one. We only want a spawn count of one. Now what we have to do is just go back here underneath and give it a Wixy charm. Set it to receive and Wixy charm in there. Things on because there's no redstone signal. Oh wait, no, there is a redstone signal down there. Hang on, I might have this backwards. Um, I might need to reinvert the thing so maybe i shouldn't have that in there and maybe i should have something else in it and do an inverted redstone signal down there and uh, what should i use piece of redstone because it's witches if i do receive redstone drop down here kill these guys because it has to be one down here at a time if there's two it'll have a constant redstone, redstone signal and it won't fire so if i remove this guy here and just grab out an actual piece of redstone, put the redstone there, grab the redstone link, put the redstone link there with the Wixie charm. Then another redstone link right here with the redstone piece in it. That way it will turn on the thing. Uh, actually, no, I need to invert this redstone signal first. So a uh, piece of cobblestone, redstone torch, uh, so that there, redstone on top, redstone torch right here, and then the redstone link. Like that, piece of redstone. There, that should mean that's on. Now when one spawns, it should only be one. We're about to find out now. I don't want to increase the spawn delay or decrease it, whatever, because I only want one to spawn. I don't want another one to spawn while this guy is already halfway falling. Any day now, you should spawn. There you go. Falls down. Turns into the Wixie Charms, and that turns back on, and there's only one witch at a time. Perfect. This should be set up perfectly now. All I need now is an Ender chest, or actually, I think just a regular old hopper here should work. Factory hopper, Ender chest, and just do it in the ground right here. It's going to be sending off the Dispel now, which is, yeah, of course, I don't want that, but whatever. Ender chest there, that go here. And I just want to increase the range to a tree by tree, and it's perfect. Right, that should be this entire thing set up to be automated Wixie charms. There's a witch up here. Oh, because there's an on redstone signal, the vector plate turns off. That is not good. Is there another way of knocking him off without causing any issues? The witch is going to spawn up here, which is not what I want. I might have to come up with something different, because if that's the case, I don't want that. And there's no fan or anything in this pack, except for the encased fans, which do require create power, which I don't want. I could possibly use a water bucket, but then the witch will just float in it. So there is a pedestal fan upgrade. I could make all that. It says an affected area of a 1x1x4. Meaning if I put the fan at the back here blowing forward or even at the front here blowing this way, it should blow whatever's on top there off at a 1x1 block going 4 blocks forward. Let me go get rid of this wandering traitor because he's annoying me. So for the encased fans, I need pearls. So pearl, uh, I have one, but I have plenty of infused pearls. So I need three more mana pearls. That's in this one here. So one, two, three. We've got four mana pearls. Let's go over here now and chuck this into here. Just give me about four pixie dust. Perfect. Fan. We need this guy now, which requires a glyph of knockback. Okay, that's simple enough. 
that and that. Yeah, the witch is just going to constantly spawn right now since there's already an entity up there. Too bad I can't put... Wait, this won't work. Hang on. Before I even go ahead and try and even use the fan, if I put like a wall right here, or actually, what am I thinking? I just put blocks there. What am I... I don't even need a fan. Just put the stone there. Now they can't spawn there. Perfect. Come down here and just take you out. There. Perfect. Now they can't spawn there no matter what. Um. Okay, I don't even need the fan. Perfect. Uh, some clear glass just to put on the front here. Why not? And there we go. It is completely automated now. Okay, I don't know why I didn't think about that. But anyway, are we actually okay with the amount we're sending out? So you should stop. Well, technically not because of how fast it does produce it, but it should be okay. We just jump down here. Let's check this guy here is okay. And let's just see if this definitely works again. Just wait for the witch to fall. Good thing this thing doesn't need power. Any day now, the witch just spawn. There we go. And sends out the pulse. Perfect. And then that recycles the source back down. Uh, you guys are still eating? Yes. Okay, that's why there's all that source. You guys are starting to fill up with the blazing archwood because it's not consuming as much anymore since this guy here has filled most of the jars. That's good. But yeah, there we go. We got fully automated Wixie charms, which I'm so happy about now. Now with that, if we look up Wix, we have 23 of them. Now, these have to be turned into the Wixie charms before they can be used in anything. So Wixie charms, we're going to have to set up an auto craft for these guys now. Let's go over here and grab our patterns and everything we're going to need now. So let's have a look here. So Wixie shards need to be turned into this. That's not right. This guy should be over here. There we go. So let's just double check everything's correct. Maybe I should just take out the ingredients one by one anyway. So arcane gold. So arcane gold. We need four of them. Okay, I hate when it does that. There we go. Next up then is a brewing stand. So brew stand. So that go here. Next up then is an electrum coin. So I don't have any Electrum coins, so I'm going to have to set up an uh, autocraft for that using our multi-servo press. Next up then is a Glyph of Craft. Uh, glyph of Craft. I don't know how I already have one, but apparently I do. Not that difficult. Then I need myself a Twisted Sapling. So Twisted Sapling. One of them. And then the Wixie Shards. One of them. And that crafts that. There's our pattern. We need to set up a pattern for a brewing stand, which requires pewter, brass rods. We have pewter already set up for auto crafting. We just need to auto craft brass rods now. And that's done in here. And then the other part then was twisted saplings. Can I just grow these in a pisogenic insulator? I can. Good. I could also just buy a couple stacks of them just to keep me going for the time being. Um, but I don't think we're going to need that many. Uh, so the brass rods then were used for making the brewing stand, which requires invar nuggets. There we go. So let's put these in here. Damn, I am all out of crafters again. Uh, do I have any left over? I have two. Okay, let me just put one crafter in the wall here and another crafter here. Damn, I really need to get better crafters. I mean, after today, we'll be able to upgrade our crafters anyway. So that in there. And now what we have to do is go put this pattern over here. So come down here and we'll put this pattern in here. Okay, now there's still one other thing we need to do. I'm going to put this broad pattern in the crafter over in our immersive engineering factory. Then we need to try and set up all of the ingredients to go where inside the controller from XNet. So you're just plates. You are wire. You are gears. And this guy here must be rods. I'm surprised I didn't have brass rod in here. But I guess not. I just remembered the other thing I need to actually set up is the Electrum coins. If we come in here, come back down and look up Electrum or coin. Electrum coin is made by an Electrum ingot and pneumatic die and like that. We'll just take this out. And I think I already have that guy set up in here. Let's go check. Uh, this is him here. Pneumatic die. 
and there's no crafter set up in here yet, but if you look up electron coins and craft 64 of them, it should send in 22 ingots, which should make you a stack of uh, ingots or a stack of coins. I'm just going to grab myself out a couple stacks of emeralds here and buy myself a ton of twisted saplings from the market here. So twisted saplings. Imagine you could automate uh, buying stuff out of this guy. Right, that should be enough twisted saplings to keep us going for a while. I like what tw something 24 wixy charms in there. Hang on, why aren't you working now? I just realized you have you haven't produced much at all. Are you actually running? This spawner is set up to run without players. So ignores players, ignores conditions, redstone control, no AI. Uh, spawn range is one. Spawn range is one. Meaning it can't spawn them at all. I need to increase the spawn range by two. Oh, okay. I thought one was from the side of the block, not literally on top of the block. Uh, okay, so spawner. That's why we're not getting any more shards. Which is that we're spawning. We're spawning on top and getting pushed off. I need an AOE glyph. So AOE glyph and a token of joy. So if I try this now, does a witch spawn? Because right now we haven't seen any witch spawn. Will they spawn now? Ah, there we go. So that might be working now. And if we just open the top here and just have a peek down. Seems fine. Just watch that for another second. The witch isn't there, so it did work. Just want to make sure it's definitely working now. We have 27 Wixie shards. Oh, there's a witch and dispelled. Perfect. Okay, so that is working. Uh, I might actually put glass up here just so I can look down just to make sure everything is still running when I'm not uh, exactly here. Just going to put like a string of glass right here just to watch. All right, perfect. So that is working now. So we're okay. Uh, in here, uh, we should be able to request at least one Wixie charm to be crafted. So Wixie charm, available everything. I need to set up crafting for her to glyph in here. But anyway, I just want all of these items here to get pulled out. Why did we get five arcane gold nuggets? Hang on, that shouldn't have happened. Five arcane gold. Okay, that's supposed to be four. Why did I have five? Did I accidentally say two in one slot? Or did I have one on me? As you know, it had five in the chest. Uh, pattern. I bet you there's an invisible slot in here somewhere. Oh, I'm going to have to recreate this pattern now. That's going to be so annoying. Uh, I'm going to have to clear it and redo it. So give me a second. Okay, that actually wasn't that bad since I already had all the ingredients in my inventory. So I was able to just put them in where they needed to go. So now we should be set up with four arcane gold and everything's correct now. The other thing I need to actually set up now is this glyph right here. Uh, why won't it let me pattern this out? Oh, is that set up like that? Uh, craft. Oh, I have to give a craft on me like that. That should be everything now set up. Uh, oh yeah, the other pattern I need to set up is a crafting table. And this crafting tables are already set up. No, they're not. So come down here again, put this pattern back in here, put this pattern in here. And now controller. We just need one of each item in each one. It doesn't necessarily matter where it goes. As long as this is one item in each slot. So slot number four now, arcane gold. Number five, arcane gold. Number six, arcane gold. Number seven, arcane gold. Number eight, then is the crafting. Let's double check this now. So, brewing stand, twisted sapling. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, I overextended that. Coin, and then you have to this guy. This guy here is going to insert the Wixy charms. This guy then here is going to export out the Wixy uh, shark once it's crafted. Put all the ingredients back in our one arcane gold okay it's gonna craft it now now we have the wixie charm back into here this guy here says it's going to export out this guy and this chest here is going to import it so put that in there and it's done now glyph of craft um i don't have a crafting table so i'm gonna have to go back and set up that pattern quickly so crafting table uh has to be regular planks so plank Oak planks, 
pattern made, stick you in there. And that should be everything. I think pretty much everything set up now. Uh, I did notice on the map as I was flying back over, there was a brood zombie that spawned over here. Or not. Make sure all the light levels are still correct over here. Seems fine. And the witch went down and she got dispelled. Perfect. And if we look at wix charms now, we have 32, which is perfect. And we got a quest reward for that, which was a book of mana regen. Useless. But there we go. Pretty much automated Wixie charms set up. Now we can use these Wixie charms to make ourselves a our neural processors. But as you see, we need raw advanced processors to set that up. So with this all set up now, we might be able to start automating either power or pneumatic craft next. And I think it's about time we auto craft pneumatic or auto yeah, auto craft pneumatic craft. Maybe upgrade these guys. I did find a document that someone linked within the Nomadica Discord that explains how to like run a compressor, the advanced compressors, even with all of the heat. So I think next episode we might try and follow that document and set up advanced compressors. I think I might set it up underground because actually another good thing about uh, this setup uh, here is we can actually do this in the nether. Apparently, the nether is the perfect temperature to make yeast culture. It's just over the 30 mark. So if we actually set this whole biofuel production up in the nether instead, we'll be able to free up all of this space right here to set up other auto crafting. Like, I'm going to probably need a lot more of these thermonomatic processing plants. I probably need one for liquid cores. As you can see here, I need one for memory essence. I'm going to need a lot of them. So... Freeing up this spot right here will be really good. And yeah, so next episode, we'll upgrade our advanced processors or our advanced compressors. And if we have time, we'll start auto crafting the pressurized chamber and the assembly line. So I'm going to end it there. Hope you'll enjoy it. And if you did, don't forget to hit like button, subscribe if you're new. Hope to see you on the next episode. So without further ado, goodbye.